All right, so this is going to be another movie review. This one's called Deep Star Six, 1989. I'm giving four out of five stars. I thought it was pretty decent. It's mixed between The Abyss and Alien. The, the monster's pretty decent. Got uh, women not wearing a bra, kind of like my... Uh, Kind of like my, uh, what do you call it? Uh, junior high school PE teacher. That's <laughs> over. <laughs> I'm, I'm struggling to get the words out of my mouth. <laughs> you know when they wear those tank tops and you can see their uh, nipples coming through? Yeah, there's a lot of that in this one. <laughs> Don't see any nudity, but you see the uh, the nipple impressions in the shirt and lots of uh, wet tank tops. That kind of stuff. The movie poster says not all aliens come from space. Uh, let me see if I can enlarge this. Save your breath. To scream, Deep Star Six. <laughs> Not too impressed by the movie poster, really. <laughs> but the movie takes a while to grow on you. When the monster appears, that's when things start kicking up. I like Nia Peoples. Wow. She is uh, Nancy Everhard. Very extremely comely women in this, but uh, they don't get naked, unfortunately. Uh, this one was released in the Philippines as Alien from the Deep, 1989 U.S. science fiction horror film about the struggle of, a crew, of the crew of an underwater military outpost to defend their base against the attacks of a sea monster, possibly a giant Europe. You're a pick direct. You're a pick direct. It was released in January 1989. The film's main actors and supporting players included Greg Evigan, Taran Block, Nancy Everhard, Cindy Pickett, uh, Miguel Ferrer, Nia Peoples. And Matt McCoy. I don't know any of these people. <laughs> None of these. I guess one of them was in uh, Police Academy 5 series, Matt McCoy. But I haven't seen that yet. So I don't know any of these people. All right. Deep Star 6 is an under experimental deep sea U.S. naval facility crewed by mix of 11 military officers and civilians now in the final week of their tour. <laughs> they dress up in 80s clothes. Lots of baseball caps and sweats and stuff. <laughs> it reminded me of my high school days. Anyway, the project is headed by John Van Gelder to test underwater colonization methods while overseeing the installation of a new nuclear missile storage platform. Already nearing his deadline, Van Gelder's plans are threatened when geologist Berkaiga discovers a massive cavern system under the site. Van Gelder orders the use of death charges to collapse the cavern to the dismay of Dr. Scarpelli, <laughs> who's extremely hot. There's a shower, shower scene, a shower scene, but they only film her for, from here up. Dr. Scapelli wants to study the potentially primordial mortal ecosystem inside. <laughs> I don't think that's a good idea. <clears throat> the ensuing detonation collapses part of the seabed, forming a massive fissure in the ocean floor. Submarine pilots Osborne and Hodges send an unmanned probe to explore, but lose, they lose contact and they venture in after it. 
Upon finding the probe, they detect a large sonar contact moments before being attacked and killed by an unseen entity. The aggressor then attacks the observation pod, leaving Joyce Collins and a dying bird, Cegia, trapped inside as it teeters on the edge of the ravine. Captain Laidlaw and submarine pilot McBride, who is also Collins' lover, attempt to rescue. <laughs> he got her pregnant out, out of wedlock. <laughs> More off-screen stuff. They dock with the pod and rescue Collins, but the unstable hatch door closes on Laidlaw. Mortally wounded, he floods the compartment, forcing McBride and Collins to return to the ship and leave with. And they leave without him. That's one way to get rid of your boss. Just crush him and. <laughs> Just crush them in the hatch door. <laughs> the remaining crew now prepare to abandon the, the base, but the missile platform must first be secured. Without laid law, facility technician Snyder is forced to interpret the unfamiliar protocol. When prompted by the computer to explain the reason, Snyder reports aggression due to the creature. The computer jumps to the conclusion that an enemy military force is attacking and it advise, advises the humans to detonate the missile warheads. Snyder complies and the resulting nuclear explosion creates a shockwave that damages Deep Star 6 and the cooling system for the base's nuclear reactor. With failed life support, they begin re repairs to... <coughs> <coughs> to restore power and pressure for the decompression procedure. <laughs> this is all very confusing. If I hadn't read it from uh, from Wikipedia like I'm doing the so-called plot, <laughs> then you somebody would come in there and accuse me of not watching the movie. <laughs> so that's why I'm going through Wikipedia. Distributed by... TriStar Pictures uh, Production Company, Carl Co. Companies? No, Carl Co. Pictures, Inc. is the production company. Release date, July 13, 1989. Released in Australia, April 13, 1989. And released in Germany on April 13, 1989. Released in France on May 31st, 1989. Running time, 99 minutes. Thank God, it's only an hour, 39 minutes. <laughs> and there's only one version of this. <laughs> Keep it simple. Budget of 8.5 million, box office of 8.1 million. So I guess you could say it was a box office flop. <laughs> Probably because nobody knew the actors' names in this one, <laughs> just as I don't. Engineer Jim Richardson ventures outside in a gym suit to effect repairs, but the creature comes after him, leading Scarpelli to conclude it is attracted to light. The crew retrieves his suit and hauls him through the airlock, but the creature forces its way inside and it bisects him. That was a cool scene. I like that one. I was starting to hate this movie until I saw that scene. <laughs> the team retreats as the creature consumes the, the panic-stricken Scarpelli. Scarpelli starts going nuts. <laughs> He's got his finger on the nuclear button. <laughs> He's got the one of these uh, sleeveless shirts. He's showing off his... Uh, his shoulders and what <laughs> this Scarpelli guy. <laughs> he's, he's got a mouth like a sailor, too. Arming themselves with shotguns and harpoons with uh, explosive cartridges, they venture back in to finish repairs. They succeed, but the creature attacks and Van Gelder dies, dies when he accidentally backs into Snyder's har harpoon. They Escape to the med lab, already badly stressed, Snyder quickly begins to unravel with guilt and fear 
<laughs> he must be Catholic. <laughs> After a hallucination of Van Gelder, Snyder jumps into the escape pod and, and it launches. However, since he has not undergone, undergone decompression, the pressure change from the ascent causes him to burst. And that's another cool scene. Like a, it's like a scene from uh, um, Scanners. <laughs> yeah. The pressure change on Scarpelli. Looks like a scheme from Scanners. Anyway, McBride swims through the flood base to the mini-sub to use it as their means of escape. While he is gone, the creature bursts into the med lab. And Diane Norris attacks it with an overcharged defibrillator. <laughs> I didn't even know they had defibrillators in 1989. Pretty cool stuff. Anyways, Norris electrocutes herself and the creature as it attacks her. <laughs> Norris is into the self-sacrifice thing for the good of the... Uh, the other two, <laughs> the, the other two lovebirds, one of whom is Pregno, Pregos, out of wedlock yeah. <laughs> relationship. So after Norris elects, electrocutes herself, it allows Collins and McBride to escape, fleeing before the reactor goes critical. But the creature is stunned. He's not dead yet. The sub breaches the surface where they deploy a raft only for the creature to reemerge. Uh, McBride discharges the mini sub's fuel, then fires a flare, killing the creature as a sub explodes. <clears throat> Another attempt at self-sacrifice to save his Prego's girlfriend. <laughs> All right, production producer Cunningham developed the idea in 1987 with the express purpose of being the first release on the slate of upcoming, upcoming underwater action sci-fi films. Originally, Robert Ham Harmon was going to direct the film. Uh, however, when the when he left. Cunningham stepped in to direct the film with a budget of $8 million. That's a lot of money back in 1989. The creature was initially designed by Chris Wallace, who then turned his production designs over to F FX head Mark Showstrom. Showstrom made slight alterations, and he changed the creature's color scheme. The underwater scenes were shot in Malta in the Renella tank at Fort Ricasoli. The film was released by TriStar Pictures in the United States on January 13th, 1989. It opened on 1,117 screens, and it debuted in eighth place with a weekend total of $3,306,320. Its final box office total was eight. Million one hundred forty three thousand two hundred twenty five dollars in the Philippines. the The film was released as Alien from the Deep by Solar Films on April seven, April twenty seventh, nineteen eighty nine. Deep Star Six was the first release of several underwater theme feature movies released between nineteen eighty nine and nineteen ninety, including Leviathan. Uh, Lords of the Deep, The Evil Below, The Abyss, which I mentioned. Great flick with Ed Harris. James Cameron directed. The Rift, Endless Descent. With the exception of The Abyss, none of these films were the box office hits. <clears throat> it's too bad. This one is underrated, man. As of uh, December 2022, on review aggregator website, Robert Rotten Tomatoes, the film had a rating of 15% based on the 13 reviews with an average rating of 4.2 out of 10. I'm giving it an 8 out of 10. I thought it was much better than that. The consensus 
which is not unusual for this channel. We like to go against the grain. We like so bad that it's good type movies on this channel. And that's how it is. That's how it's always been. <laughs> Variety said the film was diluted by implausibility due to the monster's appearance being unrealistic rather than threatening. <laughs> we like unrealistic monsters on this channel. Also criticizing the lack of centralized characters. Oh, you got a point there. <laughs> you give them a bunch of no-name actors with, <laughs> and you give them inane dialogue. It's, it makes the, the movie kind of, uh, the first half of the movie was kind of rough to get through. I'll, I'll, con I'll concede on that. Time Out criticized the film's predictability and dialogue, stating that the only invective invent the only inventive aspect of the film was the design of the monster summarizing coming Cunningham apes Ridley Scott and James Cameron competent competently enough we mentioned uh alien and abyss and there are scary moments but he has not Got the vision thing that simply rehashes the phony trappings of countless TV shows to baldly go where we have seen before. Janet Maslin from New York Times criticized the film's predictability, lack of suspense and dialogue. <clears throat> so there you have a Deep Star Six. 1989. I thought it was fun. I like the monster. I like the uh, the scene with the. Uh, I like the explosion at the end. I like the scene with the. Uh, what is it? Bisection scene. <laughs> that was cool. I like the. Uh, the two women who decide not to wear bras in 1989. <laughs> I think that was an actual thing in the 80s. Like I said, my junior high school <laughs> PE teacher did that one time and I uh, almost wet my pants. <laughs> That's how excited I was. <laughs> oh, man. I shouldn't say that. I was only... <laughs> I was only my son's age at the time. <laughs> I was going through body, some uh, testosterone. <laughs> Too much testosterone, I guess. I'll blame it on that. Anyways, uh, I'm doing much better at my job. I think they're going to hire me as a permanent employee in October, but we'll see. <laughs> My boss tells me I'm doing great work. I don't have to worry. I'm going to get uh, free health insurance, free dental. <laughs> so things are looking up, and I'm actually getting more hours. Oh, <laughs> must be early in the morning. British Crumpet Man says, hey, good looking. How are you going? Well, I'm talking about my work. And... Uh, Doing the first of eight reviews, nine reviews this week. Oh. I'm being optimistic. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> um, yeah, there's this, uh, there's this really tall white woman who's married and, uh, She's helping me advance my career. <laughs> I think she might be. Uh, uh, I don't know. There's something about her that uh, makes me want to think she, she might. Uh... <laughs> well, 
Uh, I better not comment. I don't want to get in trouble, but uh, <laughs> let's just say that uh, we get along great <laughs> at work. Maybe too great. <laughs> That's not the first time something like this has happened to me. So, uh, anyways. That's the end of my review. Hope you enjoyed it, British Crumpet Man. Have a nice day. Sorry that I'm not gay, but um, I'm looking for a third wife. If you could help me find a third wife, that would be nice. <laughs> Laters.